There are over 1,300 endangered or threatened species in the U.S. today, but many, though, teetering on the edge of extinction, safely live on millions of acres held in trust by the federal government. And some of that land isn't as remote as you might think. In fact, if you're an air traveler, you may have driven or flown right by it. San Francisco International Airport may seem to be an unlikely place to protect an endangered species, but in a grassy area flanked by runways, Natalie Reeder spends her days combing through brush to make sure nature is on track to thrive. Here's one you can see on the leaf here. The little frog is actually a key part of the food chain that keeps a rare garter snake alive. The snakes are just a native species. Uh, this is one of the few places left on the San Francisco Peninsula where they can survive. So it's the airport's responsibility to take care of the population and the habitat where they live. Long before she was required by federal law to wear a mask on airport property, Reader, San Francisco International's biologist in residence, was trying to save the garter snakes from extinction. The garter snake's bright blue, orange, and black markings are considered among the most beautiful in the world. I like snakes, I think, because they're the ultimate underdog, and everybody hates them. <laughs> so. You know, they're just a really interesting animal that um, is misunderstood. So I think that drives me to want to protect them because they don't have a lot of advocates. The unsuspecting travelers who get on and off 1,300 flights here a day would surely be surprised to learn of the lengths the airport commission has gone to accommodate snakes. For starters, 180 acres have been set aside and fenced in just for them. Well, you think about airport lands, they would typically always be developed for airport operations, for airplanes, for terminals, hotels. Whereas here, we are intentionally leaving this land in its most natural state and actually doing things to avoid erosion, to avoid flooding of waters. Doug Yakel is the airport spokesman. We actually need to cut that grass down to reduce the fire risk. Rather than bringing in heavy machinery, we actually hire a team of goats that come onto the land for two weeks and essentially eat up all the grass to avoid the fire hazard. So it's just another example of how a very modern high-tech airport is using some very low-tech solutions to preserve the space. And San Francisco's airport is not the only one in the rare species protection business. In Oregon, Portland's airport is caring for the federally threatened streak-horned lark. Not to be outdone, LAX has the federally protected El Segundo blue butterfly. And to welcome travelers to the Big Apple, JFK has the diamondback terrapins, which are slowing the pace in a city that never sleeps. People get into the mindset that you have to go to nature, but this place really shows just how much nature is all around us and that even a property that looks kind of dumpy can have a really rare endangered species doing well on it. This year, San Francisco Airport's efforts achieved a milestone. The U.S. Geological Survey and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service report a resurgence in the airport's garter snakes, making it the world's largest population of the rare snakes in a place that otherwise would have been paved over. And that's another indication of how climate change is really changing the impact of, you know, where these species can live and thrive. You know, it's getting drier in California. The prey that they eat is all but gone. I like her line about snakes being the ultimate underdog. I know, I do feel badly. <laughs> I do think there are a few people at least that like them out there. Yeah, I'm, I've discovered snakes and wolves are two of the most hated creatures. We love wolves. Wolves look a little we like snakes. I, I'm brother of a herpetologist, so grew up with snakes in the house, learned how to deal I with them. I love that.